from the historic Loretto Abbey Chapel. With the kind cooperation of the Toronto Catholic District School Board, the National Catholic Broadcasting Council presents The Daily TV Mass. Welcome to the celebration of the Daily TV Mass. I am Father Peter J. Troy. The televising of this Mass is made possible by the contribution of a family in Etobicoke, Ontario. This Mass is offered for all the displaced people of the world, that they may find permanent homes and live in peace and for world peace. We know that this tele television Mass brings meaning to the lives of tens of thousands of Canadians across our land and around the world and they join with me in thanking our donor for the gift of this Mass. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Brothers and sisters, let us call to mind our sins, and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God, and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned, in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done, in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ have, mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. May your grace not forsake us, O Lord, we pray, but make us dedicated to your help, dedicated to your holy service, and at all times obtain for us your mercy. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Daniel. Azariah, condemned to death by fire, stood still in the fire and prayed aloud. For your name's sake, do not give us up forever, and do not annul your covenant. Do not withdraw your mercy from us for the sake of Abraham, your beloved, and for the sake of your servant Isaac, and Israel, your Holy One, to whom you promised to multiply their descendants like the stars of heaven and like the sand and the shore of the sea. For we, O Lord, have become fewer than any other nation and are brought low this day in all the world because of our sins. In our day, we have no ruler or prophet, or leader, no burnt offering, or sacrifice, or oblation, or incense, no place to make an offering before you and to find mercy. Yet, with a contrite heart and a humble spirit, may we be accepted as though it were with burnt offerings of brahms and bulls, or with tens of thousands of fat lambs. Such may our sacrifice be in your sight today. And may we unreservedly follow you, for no shame will come to those who trust in you. And now, with all our heart, we follow you. We fear you and seek your presence. Do not put, put us to shame but deal with us in your patience and in your abundant mercy. Deliver us in accordance with your marvelous works and bring glory to your name, O Lord. The word of the Lord. Thanks. Thanks.
The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, o Lord. Peter came and said to Jesus, Lord, if a brother or sister sins against me, how often should I forgive? As many as seven times? Jesus said to him, Not seven times, but I tell you, seventy seven times. For this reason, the kingdom of heaven may be compared to a king who wished to settle accounts with his slaves. When he began the reckoning, one who owed him 10,000 talents was brought to him. And as he could not pay, his Lord ordered him to be sold, together with his wife and children and all his possessions and payment to be made. So the slave fell on his knees before him, saying, Have patience with me, and I will pay you everything. And out of pity, the Lord of that slave released him and forgave him the debt. But that same slave, as he went out, came upon one of his fellow slaves, who owed him a hundred denarii. And seizing him by the throat, he said, Pay what you owe. Then his fellow slave fell down and pleaded with him, Have patience with me, and I will pay you. But he refused. Then he went and threw him into prison until he would pay the debt. When his, fellow slave, when his fellow slaves saw what had happened, they were greatly distressed, and they went and reported to their Lord all that had taken place. Then his Lord summoned him and said to him, You wicked slave, I forgave you all that debt because you pleaded with me. Should you not have had mercy on your fellow slave as I had mercy on you? And in anger, his Lord handed him over to be tortured until he would pay his entire debt. So my heavenly Father will also do to every one of you if you do not forgive your brother or sister from your heart. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise Praise you, Lord Jesus Christ. In Spain, there are two rival schools of vocal music, Catalans and Madrileños. And so it happened that two of the world's renowned tenors, 
Placido Domingo and Jose Carreras were trained in different schools of music. Placido Domingo is Madrileño and Jose Carreras is Catalan. For political reasons, back in 1984, Carreras and Domingo became enemies. Being that they were very popular and much sought after the, uh, around the world, both stated in their contracts that they would perform only if the other was not invited. However, in 1987, Carreras in encountered an enemy much more powerful than his rival, Placido Domingo. His cancer diagnosis made his mu musical rivalry seem silly. He was taken by surprise with a terrible disease, leukemia. His fight against cancer was not only physically painful, but also drained him financially. Besides his numerous treatments, he also had to travel to the United States once a month for the bone marrow transplant and blood transfusion. Unable to work under these conditions, the high cost of these trips and medical treatments soon depleted all his savings. When he could no longer afford the costs, he discovered a foundation in Madrid called Hermosa Foundation, which supported and paid for the treatments for sufferers of leukemia just like him. Thanks to the support of the Hermosa Foundation, Carreras conquered the disease and returned to singing once again. When he attained an elevated status once again and attempted to join the foundation, to his surprise, he discovered that the founder and the president of, of the foundation was none other than Placido Domingo. He later found out that Placido Domingo had started this organization to help Carreras with his treatment, but has cho chosen to remain anonymous in order to not to humi humiliate him in accepting help from his enemies, so to speak. One day at one of Placido Domingo's performances in Madrid, Carreras interrupted the event and humbly knelt at his feet, asked him for her for forgiveness and publicly thanked him. Placido helped them up and with a big hug, they sealed the beginning of great friendship. In an interview with Placido Domingo, a reporter asked him why he created the Hermosa Foundation at a time when benefiting, uh, besides benefiting an enemy, he had helped the other artist that was his competition. His answer was, we cannot afford to lose a voice like that. Since then, they started to travel together around the world. I'm sure you've all heard of the famous three tenors, Jose Carreras, Placido Domingo, and Luciano Pavarotti. Sometimes we let our feelings and emotions get in the way of things. But it is important to realize that it is our duty and responsibility as Christians to build the, the kingdom of God, a society based on God's love and desire for peace. Remember, that the only way we can overcome hatred towards someone is if we learn to forgive them and pay them with love rather than with anything else we feel that they deserve. In today's gospel, Jesus taught his disciples about the importance of forgiveness. Jesus told St. Peter not to put limits on our love and forgiveness. When Jesus used a figure of 10,000 talents, it must have been utterly shocking to all his audience. One dinar being one day's wage, when we calculate today's minimum wage of $16.55, 10,000 talents being 200,000 years of wage would amount to $6.88 billion, the amount nobody could possibly pay back. And that's precisely the point. We owe God an infinite amount, but Jesus had paid it all. We don't owe anything to God because God has forgiven us of all our debt, but on the condition that we also cancel everybody else's debt that are owed to us. Despite this being the case, we may still be struggling with forgiving others who have hurt us. To help better understand forgiveness, let's go over three common misconceptions about forgiveness. Misconception number one, that forgiveness must be earned. When was the last time we earned God's forgiveness? Forgiveness is a gift that we give to ourselves. It's not something 
we are entitled or earn. Misconception number two, forgiveness is an emotion. Often we experience feelings of freedom and peace when we forgive someone, but feelings are a byproduct of forgiveness. Forgiveness is a decision, not an emotion. Misconception number three, that forgiveness requires reconciliation. Forgiveness and rec reconciliation are two separate actions. One can forgive and still sever the relationship. There are relationships that probably should not be reconciled, particularly if the relationship has been marked by abuse and if there is no evidence that the abusive behaviors have changed. The truth is that we are meant to love and not, not harbor resentment or anger towards others. Did you know, according to John Hopkins Hospital, forgiveness can reap huge rewards for your health? That forgiveness can lower the risk of your heart attack, improve your, your cholesterol levels, and sleep, reduce pain, blood pressure, anxiety, depression, and stress? Isn't this a sign from God that we who are made in the image and likeness of God, and that we are made by God to reflect His love and glory? Louis Smead, who was an author and a theologian, said this about forgiveness. To forgive is to let a prisoner go free and to realize the prisoner was you. The truth is, if you don't forgive, you become a prisoner in your own prison by being unable to let go of the past hurt and unable to move forward. When you forgive, you are set free from your own prison and you are free to love as God loves, as God intended us to love. For all those in our daily TV Mass Prayer Intentions book, we pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayer. Almighty and ever-living God, we ask in our community prayer that you might guide us to enter more deeply into the spirit of Lent and into the forgiveness, reconciliation, and renewal that it offers us. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Gracious and loving God, we have offered to you all our petitions. We ask you to grant them through Christ our Lord. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation. For through your goodness, we receive the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we receive the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become for us our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of God's name, for our good and all the Holy Church. Grant us, O Lord, we pray, that this saving sacrifice may cleanse us of our faults and become an oblation pleasing to your almighty power, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For you have given your children a sacred time for the renewing and purifying of their hearts, that freed from disordered affections, they may so deal with the things of this passing world as to hold rather to the things that eternally endure. And so with all the angels and saints, we praise you as without end we acclaim.
You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks. He gave it to his disciples saying, take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, and Francis, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters, who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Please join me now in this act of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in this holy sacrament of the altar. I love you above all things, and I passionately desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, come spiritually into my soul so that I may unite myself wholly to you, now and forever. Amen. Let us pray. May the holy partaking of this mystery give us life, O Lord, we pray, and grant us both pardon and protection through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in the peace of Christ. Thanks be to God. Our thanks to our donors for the gift of this Mass.